when you're focused on something, um, it's really important that you stay focused on on one goal because um, when you get too scatterbrained, um, it can really dilute the the main reason that you're striving to reach a certain level, a certain place, a certain uh, career mark, or whatever it is. Um, but I think the biggest misunderstanding with um, success in any industry, I don't care if you're a struggling actor, actress, you know, musician, painter, uh, whatever it is that, that has to do with the arts, because you know, artistic people are very interesting and different people from doctors or people that are schooled in doing exactly what they need to do because they're technicians and this is how it is and this is the facts. Where art is, it's from inside, it's from your soul, it's from in your body, it's, it hasn't been created yet, it just has to surface. You have to hope your genius is with you that day. Um, and so they're really interesting people to work with. It's no wonder half of us are manic depressants or alcoholics, you know? It's like we're always, we're everywhere. But one of the biggest misconceptions about music is that People just expect to do better and better, you know, go from uh, starting a band to getting into nightclubs, selling them out, moving up to theaters, getting into arenas, here comes the tour bus, here comes your private jet. You have to be prepared for disappointment because it's going to happen over and over and over again. The people that last in this business are the people that know how to stand back up again and fight for what they believe in and learn to, um, you know, to get back on their feet after they've been knocked down so many times. Um, because those are the people that are eventually going to get their shot in this industry. What you do with it is up to you, but I believe everybody can get a shot if you're determined and you work really hard and you stick with it no matter what. But I think the biggest problem is uh, too many people prepare people for the success part of it, for the grandeur of it. And they forget to tell them that like, hey, you know what, you're probably going to be in this band and it's going to break up. You're going to you're going to be looked at by a record label, they're going to turn you down. You're going to want to be signed by a management company, they're going to pass on you. There's going to be so many disappointments along the way and you're just going to want to give up. And uh, a friend of mine told me a long time ago that, you know, most likely it'll happen when you're ready just to quit. And and honestly, that's exactly how it happened for me. Um, you know, I I had been a musician my whole life, literally since I was 3 years old. Um, and it wasn't until I was 30, well, I signed a deal with Warner Brothers Reprise with a little punk metal band that I was with. But the real, real work didn't start until I was 30 when Godsmack got signed. But the funny thing is, is when I went to Robbie Merrill, my bass player, and I came to him, I was 27 years old at the time, and I said, you know, I'm tired of following everyone else's direction. I have this idea. I want to put this band together. I'm going to try singing, which he almost fell down the stairs laughing at me because he had always known me as a drummer. <laughs> um, and I said, I'm just going to go for it and do it my way. Uh, and he was in, you know. Um, he respected me as a musician. He had seen me play, um, you know, so he knew that I played at a certain level and this is uh, probably going to put together something quality. Um, but I didn't know what I was putting together and I certainly didn't know where it was going. Um, but the promise we made was, because at the time he had just turned 30, he was kind of sick of the whole rat race, he wanted to quit. And I said, listen, let's make ourselves a promise right now. We'll, we'll, we'll work really hard, we'll put this thing together, we don't have to have it be such a major commitment and rehearse six days a week. And We'll just do a fun studio project, we'll put some songs together, and if we don't have a deal by the time I turn 30, I'll quit with you. And in May of 98, I believe it was, um, we signed with Universal Republic Records. In February of 98, I had just turned 30. But the, the band was so hot at that moment that we couldn't give it up. We, we knew we were kind of, the labels were looking at us. We were selling out clubs all over New England. But it was that close to me quitting this business forever.